Hello everyone, Gomrath here with Gomrath Games, and this evening I'm bringing you a guide on Raiding with Leashes 4. I'm going to be talking about the best breeds to get for particular pets, where the pets are found, and which ones I think are the most useful. So, we're starting here in Ulduar, because there is a whole mess of pets here in Ulduar. So, my top picks out of all the Ulduar pets would be the Magma Raceling. He's really, really similar to Little Ragnaros with a really high power power breed, uh, kind of lower end of health. Um, and baseline speed, but he's got a cool ability. He's got flame jet and there's not a lot of pets in the game that have it And it hits really really hard Decimates the enemy with fire dealing 516 damage and has a 50% chance to ignite the area If ignited the area will continue to burn the enemy for 94 damage each round for three rounds Okay, what this equates to is that every four rounds you have a chance to cast an ability that will do a grand total of about 800 damage now that is a really really heavy hitting ability you pair that with either volcano or magma trap and you're talking about a powerhouse this is a must-have pet especially if you don't have little ragnaros he's definitely a top pick uh at least out of raiding with leashes four now this next pet here i really like originally i leveled up a balance balance breed and I kind of debated whether going back to it or not, but what makes this guy particularly useful is that he can do leap into a pounce, okay? Or he can do black claw, leap, pounce. And what that equates to is you will hit crazy, crazy hard. He is fantastic versus critters and versus just about everything with an exception of flying type pets. So really that moveset right there is unique to him with the black claw and pounce. Um, he drops from the lady with all the cats. I can't think of her name right now, but I'd recommend picking up a power power breed just because it'll make it hit that pounce hit really, really hard. Um, I wish they had a speed speed version of this pet because that way you could go like black claw and then stone skin pounce or stone skin black claw pounce or, you know, just, just a different combo. But if I was going to run this guy, I'd run all the pet or all the abilities on the right, all of his number twos. Then the other pet I want to talk about is this guy right here, the Ultra Tonk, the G0410N Ultra Tonk. Now, he has Lock On and Launch Rocket, which normally are on the same tier, and he also has Ion Cannon. Now, honestly, I don't really like this moveset. I like the Dark Moon Tonk a lot better than this guy. He does have really heavy hitting abilities, but these both take two rounds. And I mean, what you could do is potentially run like Ion Cannon, then the Bomb Bot and Lock On, but it just leaves you with a lot of downtime. And I'm not a really big fan of those two, two round moves. So, but he's decent and mechanical type pets are pretty strong. Now, another top pick out of Ulduar here is the uh, Ironbound Proto Whelp. And I always choose pure breeds over any kind of mixed breed. So I picked the HH breed up. Now he's got some really strong moves versus uh, dragon types. I mean versus magic types. And he does have Ancient Blessing, which is really, really solid. So, you know, he's a solid dragon, but nothing really special. And I think that wraps up Ulduar, really. The rest of these pets, I mean, they're okay but just not fantastic. So out of Ulduar, pick yourself up a Magma, Magma Rageling, a Sanctum Cub, and possibly the Tonk if you don't have a Dark Moon Tonk yet. But that'll do it for Ulduar. All right, everyone, we're continuing our Raiding with Leashes 4 guide, and we are now in the Trial of the Crusade. Now, this is actually a raid that most players didn't like at the time. It was really short, there was no trash, uh, some of the fights were semi-challenging, especially faction champions. A lot of people didn't like that because it played like a PvP fight, and most PvE players don't like to have to deal with PvP. So, that was this raid. Now, this particular raid drops three pets, and one of them is really, really rare and is not actually even required for the Raiding with Leashes achievement, and that is the Snowbolt Runt. Now this guy here is a very, 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 very low drop chance off of the first boss. And I'm not exactly sure the exact percentages, 
but I've run this raid probably 50 or 60 times since these pets have come out, and he and I got him to drop once. So, you know, that might be just really bad RNG on my part, or it might be that this guy's just really elusive. Now, the other two pets here are pretty cool. I mean, he's got Dreadmaw, but it only comes in the garbage breed of Balance Balance. And then we have the Nerubian Swarmer, who comes in a Power Speed Braid, which is the one that I would definitely recommend picking up. I have not gotten it to drop yet, but then again, I'm not actively farming for it. So, out of these two guys, don't really use them very often. Um, one advantage that Dreadmaw does have is he is a beast type with a dragon type move. There's only a couple pets in the game that have that unique setup. Uh, it's It can be useful for some of the Broken Isles daily quests, especially if you're going for uh, that family familiar quest. Now I want to just talk about the Snowbolt Runt really, really quickly. So he has Ice Spike, which is a really cool move but this ability has a high chance to miss. I paired him up with Murky, or let's see, what is he? Not Murky, maybe Murky? What is the name of that pet? It's got the dance. Okay, Humanoid. Okay, I, I paired him up with Turkey, and I was using Lucky Dance, and I was hitting almost every single time. And uh, that dance lasts for four turns, right? Yeah, four turns. So you switch in, and that so you do it, you switch into him, and then you have two to three turns of Ice Spike. And that can hit crazy, crazy hard, uh, which is kind of cool. And he's he also has Call Winter, which I don't know a lot of other pets have it, and Snowball. So he's a cool pet, and he's one that I really like. Uh, he's also got weakening blows, which is fantastic if you're out trying to catch certain pets, because it's an um, it's a move that will not take the pet below one health. So if you're out searching for the correct breed of a low level pet, this is a guy you're definitely gonna want. Or Grumpy from uh, I think he's found in Azuna. But that'll do it for the trial of the crusade. All right, our trip through raiding with Leeches 4 has led us into Ice Crown Citadel. This is one of my favorite raids in the game, not just only because it looks way cool, but I have very, very fond memories of being in here. And in Ice Crown Citadel, there are some awesome pets. But I say that about every raid, so don't take my word for it. We're going to start here with one of my little favorite friends, okay? Now, this is Bone Shard, or Marogar Jr., um, and he's awesome because he's one of the pets, well, not one of, he's the only pet in the game that has Bone Storm. You can have Bone Storm on literally every single one of your abilities, so you can take him in there. And this is a suicide build, but here's the thing. If you're not, oh, look at him. He does this too, sometimes. He has Bone Storm and then spins around, which is awesome. I love pets that have animations like that. So anyway, back to him. It's a suicide build, but if you go up against the team that they don't have any aquatics in them, this is, uh, let's see, that's 600, 600, 600. So it's just under 1,800 damage. So it's like 1,750, 15, excuse me, 750 damage right there with this little guy if you just go through that suicide build. And he's really awesome. I just love the new pets and the character models. I mean, all it is is a shrunken down version of him, but I love it. So, the other pet, or another one of the pets in here that I think is definitely worth mentioning is this little fella right here, Blight Breath. Now, Blight Breath is a double counter to dragon type pets. He's really good in some leveling strategies because you can just have like two low level pets in the slot, then bring him in, and then he can kill the entire team with Acid Rain and Dreadful Breath. Now, What's awesome about this particular guy is that for the longest time it was only the droplet of Yasiraj, which is a super rare drop from uh, the Shah of Pride, I believe, from the Siege of Orgrimmar raid. Anyway, he's just a super rare drop. So, and that's the moveset that made him really, really rare. And he still costs like a bazillion gold. But pick this guy up, especially if you're new to pet battling. Um, you can buy this guy in the auction house relatively inexpensive for just like a couple hundred gold, maybe a thousand. I mean, he doesn't sell that high, at least on my server. And uh, 
you could use them to fight dragon types because by the time you reach any tamers that have dragon type abilities or dragons, uh, this guy will come in really, really handy. So he's a double counter to dragons that you can pick up. Now the other crown jewel, jewel of this place is the Wicked Soul. Now what makes the Wicked Soul so powerful is his really fast speed and his haunt. Okay. Now, why is this awesome? Okay. If you're going up against a fiendish imp, which is a very, very common pet in PvP, this little fella right here, he has 333 speed. So if you're on the Wicked Soul, you will be able to outspeed the fiendish imp and get your haunt off before he's able to switch you out. But if you're going up against a team that has a fiendish imp and you have the Wicked Soul, he would be stupid to have put his fiendish imp first. But who knows? He might be. Then there's another three pets that drop in here. The Scourgeborn Whelpling. Uh, he's decent. He's an undead type that's got a bunch of uh, magic moves, so he's strong versus flying. And so he can come in handy in a handful of fights, especially for the f family familiars where you just want as diverse of kind of pets as you can get. So an undead with magic type moves is pretty solid. Then there also is the Blood Boil. And... I am trying to farm for a power, power blood boil. He's really similar to a lot of magic type pets, but he's got this whole row of undead type attacks. So you could catch people off guard and kill their humanoids with a magic type pet, which isn't something you normally see. So he really could be pretty useful and pretty awesome in PvP. I just, I'm not as big a fan as magic types. Uh, I don't know. I feel like they die way too quick. And even though their racial is that you can't take more than 35% of your health, I don't know. It's just probably a mental thing, but I feel like they're really squishy, even though this guy has 1725 health. And the last pet that drops in here is the Dredge School. Okay, let me tell you a quick little story about the Dredge School. So this guy drops off the Lich King, and he drops more frequently, I believe, in normal mode than he does in heroic mode. And when these pets first came out, this was before I really was getting into pet battles and I was just coming in here and I wanted these two pets only for vanity just so I could summon them on my DK. It'd be cool to have these little guys follow them around. And I ran ICC three times and I didn't get a single one of these pets. But every single time I ran it, I got a dredge ghoul. And I was like, this is the stupidest, ugliest looking pet. I can't believe it. So I just had three of them. And... Then I was watching a video or a stream from Hyru, and he was saying, oh, I'm going to go farm the Drudge Ghoul because I'm not going to spend 60000 on that pet. And I was like, oh, my goodness, is that how much that pet's worth? So then I went and sold three of them and made 180000 gold. And since I'd already got him for the raiding with leashes, I'm not really trying to find him again because he's not great. He's a balanced, balanced breed, and he's nothing special. Honestly, the... Other ghoul that drops from the Battle for Mount Hyjal is better than this guy, like in every way. So, yeah, nothing super special about him, but he's really expensive. So, if you're trying to farm for him, I would recommend normal mode over heroic mode. Anyway, that's everything with Raiding with Leashes 4. If there's any pets I didn't talk about or anything you're not clear on, make sure to leave it in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, a like rating is always appreciated. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, it was a pleasure gaming with you. Take care.